Hello, my name is Kim Man Chong. I am the current specification lead for JSR three forty one expression language three point zero. Although JSR three forty one is a completely new JSR, the technology was not new. It was first introduced in JSTL one point zero, and later on it was adopted for. JSP 2.0. In JSP 2.1, the expression language unifies with the expression language in JSF 1.1, so that you know they have you know, one unified expression language in JSP. JSR is a completely independent specification. The technology is used also in other Java EE technologies such as JSF. CDI. In this talk, I'm going to cover some of the more important new features in EL 3.0, and this includes support for standalone environments. I will describe some of the new operators and show how static fields and methods you know could be used. I will also show an example of how a user could customize a particular type conversion, and then describe you know, lambda expression, and also describe the support for collection objects, including the construction of collections and the operation that one could do on the collections. EL 2.2 actually allows users to use expression language in a standalone environment, but it is seldom used it that way because to set up a expression engine to evaluate expressions, there are a lot of setup that need to be done, and you know, things like you need to uh, set up a EL context object that contains the correct number of EL resolvers, function mappers, and variable mappers. So technically, it can be done, but it, it is really tedious. With this uh, specification, you know, it now makes it easy for a user to use expression evaluation in a standalone environment. The example shows that all is needed is to create an instance of a EL processor, and with it, the expression could be evaluated directly. The API also includes ways to define functions and variables. The first example shows how a function could be defined by only specifying the name of the class, you know, the function the method is in and, and also the method name in that class. Compare this with how it's being done, you know, in a JSP container where the user need to Enter the entries into a tag library descriptor. You know this is much much easier. One other aspect of setting up the environment for evaluation of expressions is that the user need to tell the expression engine you know, how to associate the beans you know, that is in user's environment. How to associate those beans with the EL identifier names and EL identifier names are used in the evaluation of the expressions. The new API you know, allows you know, this to be done in two ways. The first example shows how to associate an instance of an bean with a EL name. And in the more complicated case, you know, when the user already have a mapping for name to beans in a, a container managed bean. The second example show how he could plug in his map into the environment and that would be used you know, in evaluation of the EL expressions. I'm going to talk about you know, several new operators in this language. The first is a string concatenation operator. This operator takes two operands and convert them into string objects. The operators apply string concatenation operation to these two operators. This works like a Java string concatenation operator. 
The second useful operator is the assignment operator. The assignment operator allows a user to assign a value to an existing bin, and he could also create a new bin if it's not there, and the new bin will assume the new values. How this actually works depends on the environment. In a JSP container, the new bin will be created in the attribute map for the current page context, whereas in a standalone environment, new bin will be created in a local repository. And all this is handled by the EO resolver that sets the values the bin to be created. The example shows how a EL expression could be assigned to a EL identifier, and later on the identifier could be used in another expression. The other important or useful semicolon operators, and this operator you know, may be useful for side effects in some complicated expression. So instead of evaluating the expression two times, you know, like the previous example show, one could put both expressions in a single expression and evaluate it you know, at once. The semicolon operator is used here. One new feature in this spec is allow the user to specify his own type conversion and use that type converters in the evaluation of the EL expressions. The example show how it can be done. It's fairly straightforward. You know, you just need to identify the type of the object you want to convert and also the type of the target that you want to convert to. One of the new syntax you know, included is to reference static fields or to call static methods in a class. And the only restriction that we place on, on this is that a class must be first imported into the environment before the static members could be referenced. And this is there you know, for, for safety. The example shows how a class could be imported into the EL environment and how the static field could be used in the EL expression. And for convenience, all the classes in the java.lang package is pre-imported into the environment so that the user could use any static fields of any class inside the java.lang package. The example shows how to access one of the static fields and also call one of the static methods in two of the java.lang classes. New to EL 3.0, we introduce a lambda expression. But the syntax we use for lambda expressions is the same as the one that is being used in Java SE 8. A lambda expression behaves in EL like a nominous function. The body of a lambda expression is just a EL expression. So the example shows three lambda expressions. The first example is one with a single parameter. The second one is one with two parameters. And the last example shows a lambda expression with no parameter. A lambda expression could be evaluated immediately. The example shows uh, three examples that we had in the previous slide. And to evaluate a lambda expression, you could supply the parameters when at evaluation time. And the parameters will be applied to the lambda expression. A lambda expression could also be assigned to a EL identifier. And in doing so, we essentially give the lambda expression a name. And the identifier could be recalled later on and be evaluated. In the first example, we show how a incumbent function could be assigned to the identifier incur. And this function could be evaluated later. Compared with you know, the last syntax, one advantage of doing this, of course, is the lambda expression could be used you know, in more than one this way. 
And the other advantage is in assigning a name to another expression, we also allow recursions in the invocation. The second example shows another expression that could be used to evaluate the factorials. We also provide an API in this specification to encapsulate a EL number expression as a Java object. Once we created a Java object, the lambda expression could be evaluated you know, by calling one of the methods invoke programmatically. So the first example here shows the same evaluation as we have in the last slide. Once we have associated a Java object with a EL lambda expression, it could also be passed to a Java method. So the second example shows the same lambda increment function to the method filter. We would encounter more examples later on of uh, such usage. We also include a lot of support for collection objects. Included in the new syntax is construction of sets, lists, and maps. The first three examples shows how a set, a list, and a map could be constructed in the EL expression itself. And of course, you know, the syntax could be used to compose more complicated objects. The last example shows how one could construct a map of strings to lists. In this example, the key is a string and the value is a list. We also include a lot of operations that one could use on collection objects. The syntax we use and the selection of the operations, they are heavily influenced by what is being done in JTK8 libraries. We take a lot of effort to make sure that, that you know, what we are doing in the expression language would align very well with what would be released in JTK8 so that a user would not feel that you know, they are working with two different technologies. And the way that operations are implemented with the lambda expression we just described and also with method calls. There are about 20 or 20 operations that is supported in the current version. The operations does not operate on the collection objects directly, but they operate on the streams of collection objects. And the operation could be chained together to form a pipeline. A collection pipeline consists of a single source stream, a number of intermediate operations, and a terminal operation. In this example here, we have a stream of books, and that is the source that we operate on. We have two intermediate operations. The first one is a filter operation. The second one is the map operation. The last operation is a terminal operation. The intermediate operation take as input the elements of the source stream, and it produces as output another stream. The output of one intermediate operation can be fed into the input of another operation. In this particular example, we have the output of the filter operation fed into the input of the map operation. So in this way, you know, the operation could be chained together. Most of the intermediate operations, like in the filter and map here, they don't need to have the whole collection before them, before they could act. The filter operation, for instance, only apply to one element of the collection at, at a time. And so, in a sense, you know, they evaluate it lazily, only you know, if it is required by the downstream operations. In this way, the operation could be carried out very efficiently. We do not need to buffer up or cast up all the elements of a collection before the operation could start. Yeah, this slide shows you know, some other examples of the operations 
in the expression language. Like I mentioned before, there are about 20 operations. This only shows some of the more important or interesting operations. The flat map operation flattened out a list of lists into a single list. A collection object could also be sorted. So the sorted operation would sort a stream of objects. The second example of the sorted operations let the user specify the keys for the sorting. The reduce operations apply a binary operator on the elements. So the particular example among to adding up all the elements in a list. You know, this particular operation is very really useful. So we also include a convenience operator called sum. But of course, one could use the reduce operation uh, in, in other ways. So in summary, the JSR341 is the first independent specification for expression language. It could be used in a standard alone environment outside of Java EE. So this is one of the goals of uh, this particular specifications. And the other goal is to add more power and expressiveness to the language. And for that, we have included you know, a lot of functions in, in this particular specification. The user could find EL useful and relevant. This slide includes instructions of how to download the spec and also the source. If there are problems you know, with either the specs or the implementations, how they could be reported. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this screencast for Expression Language 3.0 JSR 341.